On the 4th of April 1912. And the oldest commercial boat on the Victorian Register. And it's been in survey longer than any boat in Australia. It's never been out of survey. And it's doing what it's doing today, taking people on the getaway boat. Either as late vessels, late tyres, past two and a half years, uh, the last decade I should say, here at the Port of Sail. So it's quite appropriate we have a heritage boat in an historic port. This area we're in was once a swamp called the Western Lagoon. And basically they excavated the swamp out, poured all the soil back into the town and filled all the surrounding by some part of the three The specification for the canal, 2.6 kilometres long, 30 metres at the waterline, 20 metres at the inverse, and some five and a half metres deep. The swing basin that we're leaving now, 150 metres by 100 metres. So it was a massive earthwork project. And at either end of the boat, there's a book of photos on the port, a book of photos on the swing bridge, and a book of photos on the bird life and animal life that we may see as we travel down. So it was a massive earthworks project. And when you consider the most sophisticated equipment was a horse-drawn scoop, albeit a state-of-the-art scoop. And in the port book, you'll see a photo of the horse-drawn scoop that they used. Also, you'll see photos of horse-drawn skits being built. That photo's taken down here at the rowing ship on Coon. And they built tram lines around the area and that's how they distributed the soil. When they completed the excavation, they diverted Floody Creek into the top of the canal. And Floody Creek's a peripheral creek that runs around Sail and separates the floodplain from the highland of the Sail. The original European name for Sale was in fact Bloody Creek. It didn't become Sale till 1849. And by the way, the little birds, see the white head just sitting coming out of the water? That is a pipe corner. So it's very much the birds we see are juveniles. And he will come up in a minute and you'll see him swallow a fish.
We've just gone past the old big rowing shed. That's been moved twice. Originally wow. built in the 1860s, it was now the junction of the canal and the Thompson River. It had to be moved to facilitate the construction of the canal moved to the port. So they were in the port of Oxerga, 1892. Moved to that location in 1907. A matter of interest coming up here on our right is the Australian Data Mail. I see this bird with the, just sitting on the snag here with a long neck with a so beak like fall. a dart. Thank you. Those Thank birds you. are called darters because they spare the fish with that sharp beak. They bring it to the surface, flick it There's into the way. air and the fish will go down their gullet. At the moment, because of the floods, we've had three floods in the last... Um, for, for, um, the last day, we had a flood in February and that was the third flood in four months. So uh, all the adult birds are out in the wetlands living it up at the moment. So all we have here is juvenile. So that's a young male. You'll notice on his neck he's got a rusty mark. When he becomes a breeding male, that becomes cherished red. So that's a male and a female you'll see is green. Keep an eye out because we also are seeing quite a few little azure kingfishers. They're the smallest Australian kingfisher, only about that high. They've got a rusty coloured dress and, uh, and a beautiful azure wing. And they inhabit just above the water line. So keep an eye out and we hopefully just Consequence of the flood, uh, you'll see that a lot of these banks have collapsed. The river's infested with European carp, and they uh, and they uh, their bottom feeders strip all the grass and reeds, and as the water rises, uh, they attack the banks, and as the water recedes, the banks collapse. So along the, uh, our travels today, you'll see uh, quite a few places I fall through here, the banks collapsed, or probably nice lost about a metre or so on the bank. Another case of trees have fallen in, and um, bird there with a long elegant neck. These birds have no these birds have no oil in their wings. So when they're in the water they sink and all you see is that elegant neck. So they're also called the snake bird. What's a snake bird? As we go down you might see just the, the uh, just the neck above the water. Okay. So that's a pipe form.
Uh, the old rowing shed that was uh, pointed out back there was physically built on this very ground where drifting over now in 1868 and had to be moved when they built the canal. The Thompson River is coming in on our right up here and the McAllister has joined it 15 kilometres upstream. And as I drift, drift slowly forward here, uh, just past the snag coming up on our right, you'll see a reed bank. And just before that reed bank, you'll see a log coming down the bank. There's a burrow behind the log and there's another burrow just upstream. There's a pair of platypus just in here. So, see the reeds coming up now? Yep, yep. And you'll see a log coming into the view up the front. Yep. Uh, now, and just upstream, there you'll go. see another burrow. Oh, yeah, yeah. See the log? Yeah. See the log yeah. there? Yeah. And then there's a burrow just... Uh, the water's quite low today. See the burrow straight through there. They have two burrows because when the females looking after the young, the males excluded to the secondary burrow. And that burrow follows the concourse for about 20 metres to the higher ground. So we're in a very healthy river system. The first, uh, so the first sail wharf was actually built across here, appreciate that was solid ground and they excavated the canals through and in the port book you'll see a photo of the paddle steamer Tangle, well that paddle steamer is actually tied to this wharf and that paddle steamer was the last boat built in the first boat yard on the Gippsland Lakes which is this stretch of water on our left. This stretch of water on our left is called McArdle's Gap. It was in 1854, yeah. Philip McArdle excavated that out to make a cradle to build the first boat of the Gippsland Lakes called the Enterprise. Yes, and as he was building the boat, the government of the day called tenders for a low level bridge where the Swing Bridge is yes. today. And that was yeah. the first that McArdle and the people of Sale heard about this low level bridge. You can imagine their concern. They're moving the wharf a further four kilometres into the floodplain and McArdle's got his boat half rigged. Anyhow, they petitioned government. Government wouldn't fudge. So McArdle sued government and in 1858 he won the court case. He got paid £1,600 in compensation, significant amount of money, but he got fined one shilling for excavating the bank without government approval. Anyhow, he's stuck here. Seven, uh, uh, seven months later, a major flood, and at that stage the Thompson came into where we are and there was a bend just here. 30 years after McArdle, they built the canal straight ahead to take out a bend. So in McArdle's day, a bend just here. So you can see the ancient river Red Gum Forest. You can see it stops here for 20 metres. That's the old course. And, he, and so, and because McArdle had weakened the bank, the water roared straight through, cut a floodway to the east. That's where Cox's Bridge is on the South Gippsland Highway. He got swept into the floodplain, was able to rejoin the Latrobe, then called the Glengarry, downstream from the low level bridge. And two days later, he took the Road Knight family to Cunningham and they were the first European settlers of what's now Lake Centre. So quite historic there. First wharf on the Gippsland Lakes, first boat building, uh, first boat. 
and in 1843, John Reeve and John McClellan and two boatmen, uh, two boatmen overlanded a boat from Port Albert to here and were the first Europeans to view the lakes from within. So that's why we have Lake Reeve and McClellan Strait. So keep your eye, these river red gums are ancient trees. Uh, we do see koalas, so look, keep looking up into the river red gums. And as I say, we do see little kingfishers and they burrow into the bank. And if you look right now, you'll see in this bank coming up a burrow about 50 mil or two in diameter straight up straight across there, see the burrow in the bank. And, uh, it's, and if you look, you'll see a few burrows. There the burrows made by the little kingfishers. So I've just got to try and find one for you. You'll see a photo in the bird book of the little kingfishers. So if you look over this bank coming up on our right, if you look over the bank and look into the uh, uh, go, uh, look over the bank and look about 20 metres in, you'll see an ancient river red gum leaning over with a big scar on the base of the tree. That's a gunai kernai scar tree where they've cut out material for their canoe or for their gunyas, their housing. And to give you an idea of age of these trees, if you look hard to left now, see where that big branch was cut out just there? Yep. That branch was cut out well over 140 years ago. Really? And was an ancient tree here. These river red gums, they say, grow up to a thousand years old. So they're all ancient trees. Wow. This is the old course of the river coming in on our right and the canal continues to take out another two things. of this tree just coming up on our right. See where they've taken out material for the gunyas. And if you look up in this tree, and remember your May Gibbs books, Snuggle Pot, Cuddle Pie, and the way she drew her angry trees, that looks like a May Gibbs angry tree. And the old course of the river heads off on our right here, and the canal goes to our left. And in that stretch of water lies what remains of Steamship Ivanhoe. Steamship Ivanhoe, built 1890 in cut down to a bar in 1920. And you'll see a photo of it in the port book, delivering red gum box to the port. Soil mill in the port, and they're cutting the red gum box into the tramway box the tramways of Melbourne. Come mid 1930, they moved the sawmill out to the Mother Gun State Forest and then the band sang the bars in the stretch of water and it's the day. So if you look to your right coming up just up here, you'll see the old horse coming in and you'll see a reef bank there of all those green no. that are growing no, around in the old hull of the island. I'll just go there. It's a shame to see 
you. Look, I'm out on the boat at the moment. I really can't talk. Um, can you ring me back later or if you want to talk to me, you can meet me at the forum when I get back about, uh, about port as well. Apologies, the phone goes straight to my ears. So there's quite a lot of young gardeners around. So they're typical young males, they show off those gardens. There's no adult birds on because they're all breeding furiously because of the floods in the wet <laughs> Really? So coming up here on our left is the best example of a balloon tree on the river. So coming up now on our left, you'll see where the Gunai Kurnai have cut out a canoe. Canoe? And um, if you look at it, you'll see the diagonal marks left by the stone axe when they leave it the outer skin off. And they tell us that that canoe was cut out well over 250 years ago. And if you look at the branch next to it, you'll see where they've cut out a lump of timber. Mm. These timber? river red gums are a very fine grain timber and they used to cut out a block of timber and carve their boomerang, their gold. And the local gun I turn I had a custom of rolling the departed ones in that outer skin to make a coffin. They would then put the coffin in the form of a tree and they wait until the body had deteriorated and the worms dropped to the ground. They then walk in the ring and travel of the worms and kill the birds on the land. That was the Gunai Kurnai, no concept of death by natural cause, all death was caused in the venue of their Uh, 
Uh, there's only five in Australia, and a uh, couple from Cairns up the front there. You would appreciate this one. Uh, there's a swing bridge in Townsville yes. on the Ross River. I said I'm good, I'm very good at hunting. So this is the original steam whistle, the original.